You're such an asshole. Hey everybody. Well, as you know, we were $999,850 short of raising $1 million for, see, for me to see the new Ghostbusters. Uh, but we did still raise, I think, 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. I haven't checked on the GoFundMe account. I'm like, eh, why the hell not? I'll, that's worth my time. I, I really wish, I, I want my two hours of life back. And I'm not saying that because I'm an evil right-wing guy. I'm not saying it because we got sick and tired of having affirmative action shoved down our throats. Um, I went into watching this movie with an open mind. I said, okay, I'm going to give it a real review. And I, it was, it was a way, I regret, I regret going. It was not worth the 150 or 200 bucks that I'm going to get for this. So, but since I went through the pain and agony and I promised the people I would, I'm going to go ahead and do a review of the new feminist Ghostbusters. Now, um, in all honesty, um, the opening is actually quite good. And I was really surprised with the creativity of how they were kind of go like reintroduce the Ghostbusters. Because this is not a continuation of, this is a whole new introduction as if the Ghostbusters started from scratch. And so it's uh, an academia setting. Uh, there's uh, the IT group nerds in, in, um, in a, um, what's it called? Uh, a vocational a Votech college. And they do a great job of forming the team of the new Ghostbusterettes. And, uh, but in very similar way, I think Paul Fig, Paul Fag. I'm not, I'm not trying to be gay. I don't know who the director was, but this is the same guy that did the movie Spy, which also had Melissa, Melissa McCarthy. Uh, and it's really odd where Spy started off strong, really good premise, uh, kind of funny. It's, it's not Casablanca, but then it went to pot in the later quarter, later third of the movie. I've just went to shit. And this movie did that, that, but except it went to shit like after the first third. It, it, the, there was like good intro. I'm like, okay, this is about as good as you can be for like basically copycatting something that has, has got. So I'm like, all right, this is about as, as creative and original as you can get. And then it, it goes stereotypical. It goes right back to the, you go girl, oh, mm, mm, slap, oh, oh and, and just fitting in. You know, there's a type of humor that Melissa McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy is good at, um, like Heat. That's a great movie. And that's the type of, you know, movie that you would have to, like, put in zingy one-liners and not take yourself too seriously. This had too much action where it's like, you're in the middle of a battle <laughs> and they got to stop. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Cowboys and Aliens in the final battle scene. These aliens are wicked fast and they're killing people like that. And, but to, to keep the, the subplots going, like they would stop and slow down time so Harrison Ford could talk to the kid who got killed. So I always viewed you as a son. I'm like, dude, you don't have time for that. Um, <clears throat> 14 aliens would have killed you by that time. And it, this battle would have all been over. So they're out there battling all these ghosts. But then, oh, we got to slow down time. They're about to take a hatchet to the head, but we got to slow down time so fucking... Whoever the redhead was in this show could say something witty. Oh, wow, clever. So uh, if we're just looking at this as a movie, it's a two. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bad movie. If it was an original, if there had never been a Ghostbusters before, this would be a two, maybe 2.5 for its originality and creativity, but it's not. This is, this is copycat. This is, I can't do what you did. Uh, anything you can do, I obviously can't do better. Uh, so you you got to give it a two uh, under the premise that this is a remake. Now, that's the other thing is it, if it was a standalone original movie, it'd be a two, maybe two two and a quarter. But you can't look at it through that lens. You got to look at it through uh, under the aura of an affirmative action remake, and that's exactly what this is because it has all the markings of affirmative action. The right off the bat, I just couldn't believe it. I can't swallow it because these are it's four gals and they're all super IT STEM geniuses. And it's kind of like Google when they did their little Google emoticon when you do the search and uh, the Juno landing. They made everybody like not white males, except for like maybe two of the little characters on their, on their Google search page. And then when you see the actual picture, it's like 90% white males. Um, you're lying. You're just lying. Now, I understand maybe you want to get girls into STEM, but <clears throat> it, it, to, to the movie going, but you know, make that a PSA. Tell that to the girls in school. Don't make a Hollywood movie out of it. 
because it's just not believable. I gotta, I gotta believe. Oh, this gal's a an IT professor, a physicist, over at uh, fucking Columbia. This gal over at a, a knockoff two-year vocational college is creating some amazing shit. And then you have the Egon character. I mean, they didn't even really. Do, I mean, it was so sad. It, they, they, they. <laughs> They were so lacking in creativity. It's it's almost like okay, we're gonna have the nerdy, and then we're gonna have Egon. I mean, it was Egon. Uh, uh, was it Vankman? It, it was just okay, but but ad vag. That's all it was. So uh, it, it, that is one thing that is that is painfully apparent and not easy to to suspend disbelief. Which is if you ever study theater, which I had one mandatory class, you have to have the willing suspension of disbelief. Well, that is such an impossibility. And I'm sorry, because women don't major in STEM. You just don't. Is there a statistical chance that four super genius women would get together and have the entrepreneurial capitalist spirit and bravery to do this all? Yeah, but it's a pretty small one. And so I, I, have, a, I have an easier time believing in ghosts than believing that four gals got together that were all super IT geniuses and actually came up with a, a, a fucking entrepreneurial uh, high-risk business venture. Um, let me consult my notes here. Um, oh, and then and then it's filled with the you go girls and clever girl jokes and girl humor, and it's it's not that. For the first third, it was pretty funny and witty, but then then it just it goes back to the the template, the boiler template, boiler plate template of you know ah, we shot him in the penis, woo, and. Where you would think that would come from would be the uh, most likely source of affirmative action. The one one saving grace of this movie uh, is the black chick. You know, I don't know her name, but unfortunately now she's known as the black chick. Uh, she was probably the best actor in this whole thing. Uh, I guess the guy was all right too uh, because he had to play really weird. I mean, and the acting was fine all around. The actors didn't. If you have a shitty premise and a shitty script and a political agenda, it's really hard to make it fly. <clears throat> But the, the uh, black actress, uh, whatever her name was, she was funny. And she did a very good job acting. I'm like, oh, okay. It, she isn't, mm -hmm. there was none of that. It, it, was, it was, that was good. That was nice to see. But then the script is just, you're rolling your eyes. You see the punchline coming. It's not clever. It's not uh, Bill Murray going up against Willie Atherton, I believe is the, <clears throat> the guy in uh, the original Ghostbusters. So, you, and that... That just turns it into another almost chick flick. Um, then, uh, oh, also, then you go, they incorporated some things. Again, they can't be original. They just can't. So they, they rely on gimmicks. One of them is, okay, you got your proton packs, but hey, to make it even more crazy, let's just throw a shit ton of weapons into it like it's a first-person shooter. So they introduce like eight times the amount of original weaponry that the original Ghostbusters used. And they got one where you punch, and then there's, like, a pistol. And they do. They do. Say hello to my little friend. I'm like, did you just say that? Did you just fucking say that? And then, uh, you know, you know, of course, McCarthy's, like, punching them. Like, wow, really? So instead of, like, I don't know, a script, a plot, something new, which I guess you're prohibited from doing because it's all been done before, it's like, well, let's just add gadgets. So I was like, okay, that's <laughs> that'll fill in a... A scene, and I wonder if we're going to see those gadgets later. Oh. And you do, you do in one of the final battle scenes where the and and the epitome, the hallmark, the watermark, the 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 USDA 100% percent certified affirmative action bullshit <clears throat> is when we have the roundhouse kicking chick cop show. <clears throat> and if you don't know what the roundhouse kicking chick cop show is, that's uh, a patented phrase of mine. I'm, I like to claim that. Uh, where you have a, a show, a cop show, and there's a chick in it, and she just does roundhouse kicks. And she, she's like this 105 pound waif who's five foot two, but she can roundhouse kick the big Russian mafioso boss with his AK-47 and, and, and five of them at the same time, just by simply roundhouse kicking. So that's why I call the roundhouse kicking chick cop show. <clears throat> and they have a scene where, with a zany one, she's got the glasses. <laughs> She's just running around, kicking all these ghosts' ass, just like John Wick. And if you haven't seen it, it's it's uh, it's John Wick. He's uh, who played it, um, Matrix guy, Keanu Reeves. And you're like, okay, come on, he's not that good at fighting. Where you slow down, he's doing all this acrobatic shit, and he's got his guns. It's the exact same thing. <clears throat> they ripped that off. Oh, they also ripped off Bioshock 2, 
uh, if any of you have played that, where uh, a mannequin is perfectly still, but then it starts falling, then it freezes again. That's, that I was like, oh, dude, you t whoever saw that, saw that at Bioshock 2, so that wasn't original. But again, the roundhouse kicking chick cop show, like, this gal's a ninja. She's the smallest one. It's not, I mean, it, at least the, the black gal, okay, I can see her kicking a little ass, but uh, that's because of size. But well, let's take the small wave, and she's going to kick the most ass. She's going to roll around, do flips like, I'm sorry, did you study on a, a martial artist uh, 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 master? Did, did you just, where was, where was the part that you became a fucking ninja? Where did that come in? And where did you also train with all these weapons uh, to, like, take out a hundred ghosts all by your little lonesome in about a 30-second slow-mo uh, segment of the movie? Um, and so that, it, it's, it, you see it there, and you're just like, okay, I get it. So there is a political agenda. Oh, they shoot the, the main guy in the end right in the groin. Oh, and, and I forgot about this. They referenced twice the amount of butt hurt they were getting on the, on the YouTube. They're like slamming on YouTube commenters and like, oh, don't ignore the crows, blah, blah, blah. It is so obvious they had an agenda. It's so obvious they wanted this to be a feminist Ghostbusters. <clears throat> and it's so obvious that, that they wanted it to be a, a chick show. I don't, not a rom-com, but it is a movie for girls because... There's some funny moments, There's some, and it's it's clever at the beginning, but then it goes right back to that damn script, and you're like, fuck. So, I, yeah, do you want to see a, a, not even a, a subtle in your face, kind of in your face, you know, look at what women could do. Oh my God, we got ghosts, and we got things. And it's it's what you'll expect. This, the, um, the predictions are true. And uh, you, you're just not going to want to see the movie. Now, finally, this is we, let's make lemonade out of lemons, okay? We don't want to hear problems, we want solutions. Let this be a lesson that we can draw from, and that is the lesson of affirmative action. And this movie epitomizes everything wrong, that's with, uh, everything wrong with affirmative action. Uh, first, it, it's shameful. I mean, and you girls, you want to you look up the heroes and role models? Why would you look at this movie? This is basically... Women can do anything men can do, but not better, but we also have to wait 30 years to do it. It's like, oh, look, you did what men did only like several decades later, all right? So that right there should be insulting and, and, and kind of like, oh, wow, this is affirmative action. No, it's handicapping you. It's treating you like, that's a nice look. We made you a movie 30 years later with tits and vag. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't worry, it sucks. Oh, and it placates to all the female stereotypes, and it dumbs down the humor to you, like, you go girl humor. But, but, see, we make you just like men. Sure you are, little sweet. So it's this condescending, a uh, condescension uh, to all women, young, especially young girls, like, oh, I want to become an engineer. It's like, really? This is what you're going to... Hopefully, hopefully young girls, though, the one saving thing this might have... Um, is young girls won't realize the politics going on and hopefully say, okay, cool, IT nerdy girls, capitalism, entrepreneurship. There's hope. There's good. But this is this just is condescending to women. Um, another thing is I, you see this happening in Marvel's comic book studios and DC Comics to a lesser extent uh, where, we, where you want to talk about cultural appropriation, uh, basically taking uh, a superhero, uh, a character, a piece of art, a piece of work uh, that happened to be done by white people or as a white person say, um, oh, was it? Oh, what's an example? The Incredible Hulk or Captain America and we turn that person from uh, a white male to a black male or from, in the case of the Incredible Hulk, there's now the Incredible She-Hulk for a, a guy to a girl. <clears throat> and it's insulting because why don't you come up with originals? Why, don't, why can't you come up with an original? It, it doesn't have to be Ghostbusters. It can't be Ghostbusters. That's been done. How do you point to a young girl today and say, look what women did. They did what men did 30 years ago and even more shittily. You know, what, what about Wonder Woman? What about Static Shock? Where are, they're, they're, they exist, but there's so few. We have true, genuine minority heroes, original minority heroes. And I am amazed with the budget that Sony has and the act. I mean, this is not some independent film. Where the fuck are you, Hollywood? Can't you make an original uh, uh, minority hero show, superhero uh, uh, story play? It doesn't have to be comic books, but can't you make something original? Shaft, there. Shaft. 
What? We gotta wait 40? How old is Shaft? Is that approaching 50 years now? You can't, you guys are so void of ideas that you can't come up with, oh, there's this crazy guy who does this crazy thing, and he's really awesome for this crazy thing. He just happens to be Hispanic. Matter of fact, no one really cares. Like, oh, yeah, man on fire. There's a perfect example. Hombre en fuego. Dude just happened to be black. And you can't, ha you cannot imagine Creasy being played by anybody but Denzel Washington. So this, this is, this is where it leads. And then finally, will you really ruin it? And this is the, the ultimate price of affirmative action, aside from not hiring the best and the, the, is you mar and you forever ruin the opportunity or chance or possibility that a movie, especially now, especially with the, the with the completeness and the omnipresence of affirmative action, and we got to do this, and we got to lift the leg, and all their and privilege and all that. <clears throat> now that that has been so permeated throughout society, nobody can look at a movie anymore and say, "Oh, about a minority or any kind of uh, uh, art or uh, uh, literature or theater or anything like that." If it comes out and it has a, a, any minority in it, uh, Hispanic, black, Asian, uh, lesser Asian, but, but female or gay or whatever, people are automatically going to assume, oh, they only got that or we're only putting it in there for affirmative action purposes. And you could have the greatest, newest movie ever. You could have a movie that's as good as Die Hard. You could have a movie that's as good as um, Casablanca. You could have a movie that's as good as Man on Fire. But I think it's kind of sad. You look at Man on Fire, that's probably going to be one of the last few movies that we saw that was like, damn, that is a good fucking movie. That's one of my favorite movies. And we never, it never dawned on us, oh, they only gave it to fucking um, Denzel Washington because he's black. Henceforth, any genuine, true, true excellence, true achievement, true genius in the art world, be it theater, art, comic books, whatever, books, <clears throat> If there's a minority in it, now it is forever tainted. Where it's like, oh, they only got it. I I wonder. I mean, when they get, when they had the black stormtrooper guy, I never seen the movie, but he pops up, and and it's like, okay, well, he just happens to be a black stormtrooper. I didn't know this, but I guess the stormtroopers were all clones, so it's impossible to firm, so it's not canon. And you're kind of like, all right. But then when you had uh, what's his name, J.J. Abrams saying, yeah, uh, Star Wars is too white. Well, then obviously you have a political agenda, and obviously it's true. And this is this is. The perfect example. This is not quality. This is not excellence. This is sad copycatism and poorly copycatism. This is like the North Koreans when they try to make a drone uh, or make nuclear missiles. Okay, that's how bad this is. And, and so this is not going to be achieve excellence or something to point to. But down the road, there is going to be a minority director, a female author, um, some, some minority actors and actresses. Um, there's going to be a director. There's going to be some piece of culture, literature, art, theater. That's going to be brilliant. And, and then it will call for someone who happens to be a minority, either through those who created it, wrote it, screenwriter it, whatever, or the actors and actresses, and everyone's going to now wonder, oh, did they? Oh, yeah. And, and what's worse is now we always have to talk about this angle. We're wasting our time talking about it because of shit fucking politically incentivized movies like this. So the movie itself is shit. Okay, it's not good. All right, standing on its own. Started off strong, went to pot real quick. Under the lens of affirmative action, it's painful. It's just dumb. Uh, I mean, thank God there was only a handful of people in the theater. Mostly a couple little kids. They're single moms and then like this one nerdy guy although who knows maybe he was like me he's like yeah, I'm gonna go see this movie see how bad it is but he seemed to be kind of like the beta white knight type of boy um, so pe people aren't gonna I don't believe people are, are falling for it but for the love of God st I mean don't don't see this movie <laughs> just because it, it sends all it's not that good but it's just gonna drive your blood pressure up because of what it's doing to excellence and achievements in this country anyway that's my review. Do not go see it. You already knew not to see it. Uh, but hopefully we, we, can, we can learn So, Oh, one final thing. Fuck. Of the four Ghostbusters, the original one, three are still alive. Harold Ramis is dead. Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson. And all of them had cameo appearances. 
Sly Stallone, can you get in there, grab these guys, and make kind of a fucking Expendables remake of Ghostbusters? Get these old timers in there. I mean, Egon's dead. He died. All right, then you bring in some new rookie kid. Maybe they could even be part of the plot. But for the love of God, enough with what men did 30 years ago plus Vag. Toodles.